I've seen a lot of people struggle recently with thriving as a Chinese empire or other nationalist China in Hui 4. And it doesn't have to be that difficult. I'm going to show you how to make it work for you. There's a bunch of things that are holding you back as China. Number one, and the main one, is the army corruption. Minus 30% attack, defense, and mobilization speed. Mobilization speed, you know, since you have more than enough manpower, it's not the end of the world. But the attack and defense, horrific. The second thing is the massive, massive coastline that we have. That will be, that will have to be defended if we want to survive. And I'm talking about 20 to 40 men dedicated to naval invasions, which is going to be difficult, especially early on, as we still will be struggling with the army corruption. And another thing that's really bad for China is the amount of focuses, well, not focuses, research slots that we have. Two is like the minimum that you can get in this game. I've never seen a nation that only has one focus, um, research slot rather. Keep confusing these two apparently. So we're gonna have to fix that if we wanna keep up with China. Cause they start with four, so they can easily outcompete us research wise. And our industry, while decent enough for a nation as massive as China, is not nearly strong enough to really help us survive. That being said, we're gonna go with their normal research first. There's no need for anything else currently. Now we're gonna start by training our units. One factory will go on artillery currently, the rest will go on guns because we need a lot of them and then there's a couple of options for us for the focuses two ways we can go for we can beeline it towards army reforms that's two focuses away which will give us the army reform decisions which allow us to work army corruption away 100 army experience at a time which is going to take us a while to get to there after that we would most likely go to focus three in here to focus four into the third research slot. Something else I'd like to do even more than that is instead beeline towards the interior. We get to annex all of these guys in mainland China so that they become a part of us. And instead of forming the United Front where everyone's just our allies, we will control that directly and be able to crush the Japanese more easily. And today I think that's the way we're gonna go. We're gonna go national principles of the people nationalism and then prioritize the interior and the anti-communism pact and since we will have time we might as well focus on factories too because i've got a neat little trick i know like a bunch of people use this anyway but what we're gonna do is we'll form an agency that we can apply diplomatic pressure on japan later on and extend our timer because japan usually will declare on us somewhere between 1937 and 1938 usually on the side of 1937 and this especially considering i am playing on historical just to make sure that this guy that i'm currently showing you is easily repeatable there we go we got our first spy perfect we need to make sure that our spy can kill himself not for the memes but in case it gets caught we instantly will be able to get ourselves a new spy and continue on with our network all our units are pretty much trained up we're starting to get some spare guns in which case i'm just gonna make the yuantuan into the sanjiao jun units they have a bit more beef to them compared to these eight combat with guys so it'll be a lot more useful and we can continue with training them up right after same with these ones actually get started on that please thank you we're gonna go for dispersed industry because we won't really have much of an air force and now that i think about it these air guys they're not going to make a difference with our fight with Japan. They're garbage airplanes sell them on the international market. And airplanes usually go really well on the international market. So put them all in and ask for a high price. That can make a difference with your industry expansion. Now that we have over 150 political power, I am going to go for the silent workers. The sooner you get them, the quicker he'll pay for himself. And eventually we'll go for partial mobilization or even war economy depending on how the next few events will pan out. There we go. We're next gonna subjugate the warlords. Some of them might accept, some of them might deny. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. The best case scenario for us is if a few deny and a few accept. Because if we were to fight them, we will obviously have to, you know, go to war, which means our army experience is gonna increase. And once we take the 
focus in here of army reform we'll be able to spend that towards getting rid of our army corruption i'm also gonna make a 24 stack preemptively the closer we get towards the start of the war with japan the more important it becomes that we have like a certain amount of troops on the front line with japan because we are gonna attempt to get a lovely little non-aggression pact currently they're not very interested but they will be eventually they will be like one submits another refuses another okay two people submitted the rest refused Shibesema and Sinkang submitted. That's pretty good for us. That means after the others, we can go ourselves. Which is Shangxi, Guangxi, and Yunnan. They are timed though, so we will have to hurry it up more or less. But that's okay, that's what this army is for. And we definitely will just rush in just like that without a single care in the world because to us it doesn't really matter how many casualties we take we got plenty of manpower and that despite having an ineffective bureaucracy we just want to get casualties on our side and we want to get plenty of army experience and of course eventually we'll need to finish off the war see there it is we can negotiate for a non-aggression pact with japan we'll do that later for now i want to push in and whatever we can Obviously, we're gonna attempt to get some VPs. In fact, tell our guys to be even more aggressive. We're losing a massive amount of equipment. As you can see, we don't care. It's all about the army experience. Wherever we have tiny little breakthroughs, we'll just move in. There's not really much they can do. They don't have enough troops to really contest me. And since we have the political points, we'll go for partial mobilization. Might as well. War economy is kind of overrated, to be honest. I don't... There's no point in waiting too long for the optimal situation and save 150 pp if we ever need war economy we'll take it then and once guangzhou falls i'm pretty sure yep there we go it's over and we even get 3,000 guns which will help us out tremendously our next target will be guangzhou so that might be a little bit more difficult because there's not really a lot of supply really in here so i'm gonna make a couple of su supply hubs and instead take also the reorganized railway system so i can build them up a little bit quicker we don't really need much else currently and i'm also gonna start making some anti-air here and there and maybe some trains why not and now we have really a decent amount of infantry guns it's time to ramp up our artillery production because we would like to get a couple of artillery units into our armies now that we got the army reform and we're nearing our first army upgrade we can go towards the research slot in here and normally the the fourth research slot in here would be a bit difficult to get but we're already at 47 factories because of all the stuff that we take have taken from guangxi and we will take from yunnan because it's all core core territory anyway and let's declare war boom and now i think it's pretty much time for us to get our non-aggression pact with the japanese it'll hold them off from being able to declare war on us but i feel like it doesn't really matter now that i look at it because we've almost gotten all of our boys under control there's just a few communist remnants in here that are left such as yunnan which will be our next target let's go and declare war on the Shangxi. we should be able to smoothly move through there as you can see they don't really have enough troops to really stop us from doing anything the toughest one will be the communist ones instead and just in time look at that japan is justifying on us we do have our cute little non-aggression pact which will which they will definitely respect apparently in real life I'd be very surprised if they would, but I guess it doesn't really matter to us. And there we go. Shangxi also dead. We got some guns off of them. Not much, but that doesn't really matter. And now the annoying one. Communist China. But before we go, look at that. Our first debuff gone. Or at least lessened by a third. I'm gonna see if I can push in. I most likely won't be able to. Oh, actually, after I get the anti common turn packed. <laughs> I forgot. So before I continue on, I need another 24 stack to guard the rest of my coastline eventually. Actually, you know what? I just got the whole front line, in fact. Marco Polo Bridge incident. We have reached a breaking point. Yes. They will now be able to use their CB to declare war on us as soon as they no longer have a, an aggression pact with us. So we still have time to take uh, Communist China. Let's get the army offensiveness guy. Why not? It'll also give me extra army experience very important and i think i'm pretty much done with well factories of the civilian variety now we'll go on to the offensive with military factories as you can see i'm also building them in plus 20 percent instead of the better infrastructure to lands on the edge just in case a naval invasion is successful i want to build them inwards so that i can still have access to them even if the war with japan does not go according to plan. There we are. Claim is ready. Call in my allies. Boom. Move in, boys. In fact, yeah, we are already very aggressive. Why didn't you get... I called you in, my dude. Come in. 
Thank you. Apply more pressure. And it seems that because I declared fairly early on the communists, we are actually able to somewhat push in. We don't actually have to retreat back. Normally what I would do is just make a fallback line a bit further away from communist China so that they would expand their territory. But since they would not have enough units, they would be having a very fragile front line. And after they've expanded, I'll just pretty much walk around them and encircle them wherever I can. But it doesn't seem like it's even necessary in here. Yes, we're taking massive amounts of casualties, but like I said, it doesn't matter. We're here to grind experience. We're almost ready for another debuff removal. We need more trains, what the hell? How's the building of trains going? Six a year? So one every two months? Nuh uh. I'm just gonna steal some off. Oh, I can't steal them off of the civilians because I'm at war. That kind of sucks. And now the focus that you take don't really matter. Uh, eventually, once we're out of war, we'll take this one. We'll be very close to taking the next research slot. Can also have one in here, and I would mostly prioritize research slots. And also, make sure that some of these focuses give you more inflation because you'll be spending a lot of money. There's also other focuses that lower it, or even the forceful loan taken in here, forced loans, that will allow you to buy it down with a little power. So make sure that's just balanced, because otherwise you'll be spending a lot of your factories on useless stuff, and we don't want that. And boom, we've encircled a couple of their units, which is pretty nice, I guess. Since we finished that, we can focus on the main front line. Okay, all that's left is this. And now we'll attempt to push in again. They eventually break through to them. They won't be able to defend until the end of time. More importantly, army corruption, gone. As you can see, our stability is fairly low and our war support is on the low side as well. Around the time when you're gonna have to fight Japan, it might be prudent for you to fix that. You can take some improved workers condition, some more propaganda stuff, should be doable. But right now it's not really a priority because we don't really need it. Oh, and they're left with one tile, which means everyone that gets deorged in this tile just dies. Now you'll be pretty much ready to fight Japan. You can just let them walk in here. There's almost no supply down here, but I don't like the thought of giving up my territory, so I'll just build a supply line just for myself up here, because eventually I will need it. And I'd like to also flip towards superior firepower. It is the better doctrine for us, for everyone really. That China, except for the Japanese parts, is officially completely under our control. These two are our puppets and they will not try to break free. So you don't have to worry about that. And now let's move our actual divisions up onto the front line, right? These will be in charge of the front line, especially after the supply line in here is properly built, which we're still in the process of doing. And if we can improve workers condition, army logistics, because we are struggling with it, as you can see. And after I'm done with these factories, I'm going to have a have a little look and improve tiles that have valuable resources. Some of them are more useful than others, but that's okay. They'll help me out tremendously. Now look at that, we already have above 74 factories. We'll can, we can get our fourth one right away. Once we're done with that, I'm also gonna go for the mining commission. We do need to resource gain efficiency because sadly China doesn't have that many resources. For now though, I'm just gonna buy them off of the Soviet Union because I need to build more trains. We're out of them. We have enough units on this front line, right? Now we can tell these guys that it's time to just defend our coastline. Just quite sizable, as you can see. Oh, non-aggression pact cancelled just in time. And Japan should be able to declare war on us. And there we go. They have declared the war. Wait, why isn't Beijing being defended? What the hell? I thought I did, but I guess not. Anyway, now we should have a full front line. And we can just sit back and relax. Watch them struggle a little bit, maybe. I don't know. We got time. And as you can see, despite us being China, we only lost 10k units, they've lost 200,000. It's supposed to be the other way around. Even when you're defending, because we got rid of the army corruption, they're the ones that are on the weaker side because they have debuffs against us, which they will be able to work out eventually. But by the time that they do that, they might be a million men uh, down. Oh, I've heard the first naval invasion. Where is that gonna be? In here apparently. That's very interesting. I'm thinking of also making a nice little 24 stack to help deal with shenanigans like these. They're trying to get, as you can see, our railway disconnected, ensuring that all of our units in here starve. But because of our units strength these days, it shouldn't really be a problem. See, these units that they've sent in, they've sent in to die. To be honest, I don't even need this 24 stack that I just made, as you can see. Normally, when the, the moment that Japan does a naval invasion, you're kind of fucked. But with this guide, you don't really have anything to worry about. This is with trash tier units, by the way. Look at this stack. That's 
awful. This is gross. When you show this division, people will laugh at you. But still, a trash tier division like that is more than enough to deal with Japan, as you can see. They've become scared to attack us, I think. And now we can go for war economy. Because why not, really? What else are we going to spend the points on, right? Another cute little thing is they constantly bomb the northern China region. What you can do is start pumping down a bunch of anti-air. They'll stop them dead in their tracks. And there's a second naval invasion in here. Not doing anything with that. Just letting the AI take care of it. Usually the AI is pretty bad when it comes to naval defense. But because we're overstacked, we have four, four units on average per naval dockyard. It shouldn't be a problem, really. And you know what? How about even more? There we go. I'm kind of curious if I were to push in, right? How would that look? Obviously not good yet. It's too early to attack for ourselves. But I'm afraid I might be too powerful for Japan now. Because they no longer there to attack me. Obviously, we don't need this. But the War of Resistance will give us extra core defensiveness. And we are only guarding our cores anyway. So why not, right? And in here, we can even get division attack on court uh, territory. So we'll be completely golden. You know what? I'm thinking of removing one of the stacks, moving them down to here. I want to give Japan a chance. Come on. They don't want to attack me. Still, they, I might have given them PTSD. We've kind of run out of convoys. So I'm thinking of blocking off my own sea access, which would, there we go, give us some more supplies again. Yeah, they don't want to attack. In that case, put my units back. We might as well go on the offensive very soon here's another naval invasion our boys will take care of it real quick i'm thinking since i'm pretty much out competing them up in mengoku i might as well push in right as you can see they don't really have much to stop me with and i'm taking their supply hub they've pretty much been exhausted already now look at that a cute little encirclement it's not much but it's more than enough for this area that's for sure and we can even connect up their supply hub with ours those two are dead and boom they still have one more supply hub that we can take i guess this one in here alternatively we could also just push in even further but i'm thinking i'm gonna stretch them as thinly as i can and if you want we can even get a bonus in here as soon as we spent 200 more experience on lessons of war but as you can see we don't really need much we can easily push in if we wanted to we could probably even attempt to encircle them and you know what fuck it just attack. They cannot stop us anymore. It'll do a lot better if you actually micromanage, but I'm telling you, it's very doable even without it. Now let's go and finish up that encirclement that we've been talking about, huh? There you go. It's only about like 12 troops, but they don't really have that much. It's a tenth of their army. They'll be gone forever. In fact, it's even 14. It's a pretty decent amount. As a counteroffensive, they're gonna attempt to encircle us and navally invade us. Doesn't matter. These are all extra troops that we get to kill. 14 units dead in here as well. 85 units they have left. We have more manpower on the field than they do. They lost a million, despite us even going for a battle plan. We have about 10 to 1 casualties. Playing as China is very easy, pretty much. If you want, you can always just build up a supply up in here as well. And in fact, I might, just because I can, really. They're going to they're gonna attempt to attack you. And in some places, they might even break through. That's okay. What you, what you can do also is go for motorized, help out with the supplies. It won't be enough to replace a supply hub, but it'll help you close up the gap until you've actually built up that supply hub and again look at that all these naval evasions they keep trying to do it'll only make everything easier for us research wise it doesn't really matter what you take you don't quite have the industry until it's too late to go for tanks so mostly i encourage you to take everything up to date with your industry make sure to take the appro appropriate research text whenever it's necessary and then make sure you're up to date with both artillery and guns or as much as you can be really i'm in the process of also getting some support companies ready but i don't have any in my units currently except for support artillery this is the unit i'm rocking currently absolute trash it's totally fine you don't need anything incredible just make sure that the units that you do field are fully equipped that's more important than what kind of division you have and there we go lessons of war we have taken which enables us to get anti-imperialism you know what fuck it might as well we don't really need it but every little bit counts especially if it's like if you're struggling with china it would definitely help you out to get used to it like this and then eventually in the future you'll be able to do it even without that make sure as much as possible that you have the right you know trade goods to still produce your stuff effectively we need to buy some more so that we can better produce some support equipment because we're kind of lacking that currently oh i think we accidentally pushed them out with this tile right yeah they're the owner Somehow I took this tile by accident. I don't know how. I mean, I guess I might as well take the rest since I'm here. I'll deprive them of the port. And I think, yeah, 
of an extra supply line, which means that their closest supply is Mukden and uh, Kirin or Seeking? Sink? Hasinkin? That's definitely how you pronounce it. Doesn't matter. I'm not here to teach you how to pronounce. I'm here to teach you how to bully Japan. And as soon as I finish this supply up, there you go. Might as well attack. You don't need it. It's just something I like to have because it's going to take a while before you reach the supply map. And it's going to be a tough time taking Hasinkin, knowing that they are fully supplied and you're starving. Let's attack now that we do have the supply. As you can see, easy peasy lemon squeezy. At this point, there's no real focus that I need. Might as well get some extra factories, huh? And do make sure, this is very important. As you take tiles, garrison them. I've had so many instances where I forgot the garrison stuff and then I ended up getting reverse invaded and had to reconquer a lot of land that I conquered in the first place. It was misery. But you live and you learn. Let's also go for Mukden. We will take a supply line but more importantly, we will deprive them of one. And here's another supply line that we can deprive them of, hopefully. They'll keep naval invading. But you should see that as an opportunity for you to get free encirclements and destroy those units. If you got enough units, if you got 324 stacks, you don't even have to micromanage it. I just put that in there for the sake of ease. Because as you can see, the AI likes to run around. Sometimes they leave their port. If you have enough units... That doesn't even matter. But if you don't, you're gonna have to look at over it manually. I would recommend that you make the area defense plan of only garrisoning the naval bases. And then once everyone's in their position, you would delete it so that they stay there. And then just manually move them around as is necessary. But that's just a suggestion. I'll take Mukden, deprive them of it. Yeah, this is what I've been talking about. It's difficult to take it once our units are starving. And theirs are fully supplied. So it does make sense to build up supply hubs from time to time. Alternatively, I could easily just do this and just connect it up already. And now we're again fully supplied and marching through. Eventually, as you can see, Manchuko will fall. Now kill off any stragglers that you can and then focus back on the main front line. As soon as we kick him out of Korea, we'll be good. We no longer have to worry about anything. We'll get a lovely little peace deal. And then the whole Sino-Japanese war is considered over. And this with under 500,000 casualties, which for China is definitely good. Oh, and I forgot, sometimes this does happen. Usually it's not the end of the world, but they do steal Indochina off of France. You can just put a stopgap in there. 48 units should be enough until your main battles over in Korea are done. As you can see, build up a quick little 48 stack. And now I'm gonna push back the Chinese, uh, the Chinese, I'm sorry, the Japanese out of here. It's a little sneaky tactic that they like to do from time to time. And as you can see, it's always possible that you keep forgetting stuff, but they very rarely manage to take Indochina before you finish the war. It's because I'm going about it pretty casually that they managed to take it but that's okay oh well, look at that korea is safe and again to prevent naval invasions we're gonna tell our boys to garrison everything in here that we've taken and now we can send our main units down south to help deal with indochina as you can see we're very quickly pushing them out at this point it's over i'm gonna start integrating my boys and there we go peace in our time. Once you kick him out of the mainland and Korea, this will happen. The game is, you know, always a mess, so sometimes weird stuff like this happens. Had we taken over all of Indochina, we would have gotten it as well. It is what it is. Doesn't matter to us. And there we go. China is free and prosperous. And at the end of the day, we only needed like 120 units for that. We could probably do it in 100 units or less, but that's completely up to you. This was just a casual run through, as you can see. But if you more or less follow this guide, which is more like a loose guideline that you can alter to your own needs. I guarantee you, no matter how good or how bad you are, at some point you'll easily defeat Japan. It might take you a few tries to get the hang of it if you're struggling with uh, playing as China, but that's how it goes. With that, that is pretty much all the time I have left for today. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you did. Hopefully, I'll see you next time, and hopefully, you have a nice day. Bye-bye.